Hey guys, uh, Chris here, back from CNH Smalls again for another uh, quick video here for you guys today. Uh, we got a uh, customer's machine here. He brought it here about uh, three, about three or four days ago. It was on last um, uh, was it called last Thursday or Friday? They brought it over here. Uh, the machine was sitting in a guy's garage for about I think about six months because he supposedly bought it at a resale shop or a pawn shop or something like that out there, and the machine would not start for him whatsoever after he purchased it and he tried to take it back. And unfortunately, the place uh, they have a uh, policy in most shops out there, like retail shops or pawn shops, where um, all sales final, you don't get any warranty out there for that. So uh, he brought to us after that because uh, he could still could not get it right. He tried to change the gasoline out and stuff like that. And the machine would not start for him whatsoever out here. So uh, he brought to us, and we checked it out over here, and we found out the carb. Uh, needed to be replaced on it plus the fuel lines need to be purged uh, we also replaced one fuel line on this uh, machine this machine as well too because it was getting pretty bad it was getting getting kind of rotted off in there it looks like whoever was using it before uh, the guy uh, basically had contaminated fuel and the uh, fuel was uh, full of water and debris down inside as well too and um uh, this is the four-stroke engine as well too so uh they're not uh, as uh, we want to call um uh the actual two strokes uh you have to use almost like near pure gasoline uh, these four strokes you can get away with a little bit of gum you know while water and the fuel out there but it, not too much um to say that uh, lightly out there for that so we'll give you a show of the front of the engine right here as well too and there we go this is the uh, Sears Craftsman version right here. This is the Sears Craftsman No Mix, as they call it on here. No Mix, oil, gas, four stroke, 30cc with the uh, speed start technology on this machine. Uh, what that speed start technology is, is uh, it's a combination of having a um, compression release on the engine on here and also having like a incredible style uh, recoil uh, unit on these machines as well too because this thing is very easy to pull over out here for that and uh, that's one reason why a lot of people like uh, this specific model because I had this uh, this kind of machine over here probably about let me see about probably about five or six of these over here last year and people liked them because it was a lot easier to pull over as opposed to your typical uh, two-stroke like you know Husqvarna is still out there for that and that was that was one of the reasons or the contributing factors of why people wanted a four-stroke one primarily because they don't have to mix the gas with the oil so if they if they do it improperly it might burn the engine up and you simply just put gasoline into the gas tank as well too for this one plus you also have your uh, oil reservoir dipstick area on the side right here as well too you have a little uh, you know, call a little plastic um, thing right here for your oil level right here because you do have to put oil in these machines right here. You have to drain them out every time you get done doing that as well too. Uh, the oil fill uh, tube is right up here. And you have your little hourglass right down here as well too. You should keep it between the high and the low portion right here for the actual uh, setting right there. So there's your actual oil level setting right there. This is the oil filler hole. Max oil level is about... 2.03 ounces or 60 milliliters on there as well too and you do not want to overfill these machines because if you do it causes uh, air, uh, oil aeration I should say specifically and it can foam up inside the engine and your engine will not be able to lubricate itself properly and that will cause the engine to possibly uh, seize up inside because the engine is not being functionally lubricated properly so we'll give you a shot of the actual uh, model number and serial number on here as well too let me flip this around here for you. Let me get this thing out of the way here. Bear with me here for a couple seconds. Here you go. Here's the model number and serial number for you. Right. Let me see. Get a better shot here for you. Here, sorry about this. Here we go. Let me see. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me try to zoom in here for you guys. Hold on. There we go. Focus now. Model number 316-7319.7.1 with a serial number starting with 1A. So there's your model number and serial number. And we'll flip it back down here as well too. This is the overhead valve engine specifically because you have your uh, valve covered directly underneath your actual cover right here to your plastic, um, you know, plastic casing cover as well too. And uh, we'll go ahead and um, you know, do a fire up, fire up of this machine here. Then we'll start for you guys as well too. Uh, we replaced the carb on here. Here's the old carb we got right here for you guys. It's the old carb. This is the Walbro carb. 
they have I couldn't believe they actually, actually had an American you know American branded company on these things it's a Walbro WY let me see get a better shot here for you guys on the top of the carb uh, let me see if you can flip it around here sorry about that there you go Walbro let me see if you can zoom in here for you there we go sorry about that Walbro WYLA carburetor that's the designation and it has the Walbro name Clearly marked on the top of the carburetor as well, too, right here on top of the actual, uh, we will call barrel control assembly right here as well, too. So this is what it looks like on the front side where it goes into the intake portion right here. And here's the other side as well, too, where it goes into the air box side right there as well, too. So that's basically what the carb looks like. Brand, or this is the old one. It, when you do replace these carburetors, guys, you have to replace the uh, two intake gaskets they have on the carb assembly. Uh, they have one uh, directly behind the carb on here. You have one intake gasket. Uh, you can actually see it here. It was, actually, it was actually pulled off this one right here. You have one carb gasket right here. Then you have your um, like, a, like a small uh, oval shaped air box um, you know, some kind of a, it, it's like a plastic block then you have a second uh, large intake gasket it sits between that as well too so you have two separate gaskets that have to be replaced anytime you take this thing apart and replace the actual carb assembly so that's basically what you do for you know doing a quick uh, carb job this takes a bite it's about 30 35 40 minutes to do that job because the way they have this thing situated on here uh, you have your carb it's actually mined with um uh, two different um, bolt systems on these things just want to show you that right here real quick get this air filter out of here I really hate these new covers they got on these things. They're, they're really shitty. Okay, let me, get the, let me get the air filter down here real quick. There we go. Okay. Uh, these ones right here, you have two different types of uh, bolt systems on it. You have one right here. You have two bolts right here. These two bolts bolt directly to the intake manifold. You have a, you have like a small rubberized uh, intake manifold boot system on it. Bolt uh, to the side of the engine block. That's what these two bolts go right here. These are by T25s. And you also have two other bolts. Um, you probably can't really see, but they are definitely here. Trust me about that. Uh, there are bolts underneath. Uh, between this uh, this casing right here and this gas tank right here, you have to get a T25 and stick it directly behind uh, the actual plastic portion right here. But you have two bolts directly underneath here that go, basically go straight into the side of the actual engine block down there. And you have two bolts that actually hold uh, this entire uh, this entire casing right here onto the actual um, you know side of the engine right here as well too. So you have one two down the ball, and then you have two more up on top. So if you do take these two ones off right here, and you're you're wiggling this thing like this, and you can't figure out why in the hell it can't come off, uh, you do have two mining bolts between your gas tank right here and your actual carb uh, air intake box assembly right here as well too. So you have two bolts mining directly underneath here as well too. So just be mindful of that fact as well too. Uh, this one has like four. We did have to replace the fuel line on the top uh, portion right here, but you can't really see it because um, it's up underneath the actual covering right here. You got one fuel line right here, and you have a second one that goes up that primer bulb as well too. We replaced the uh, you we know, call the one that comes out of the carb on this uh, side. You can probably barely see it right here, but it is definitely back down here. Here it's right. You can probably see it straight down inside right there, but it's definitely in there. So we did replace the one fuel line that was totally totally corrupt on there because it was getting all. Uh, funny looking on her it was actually splitting on us over here so we were definitely we definitely replaced that one plus we also replaced the spark plug on here as well too uh, we also checked out the actual um, muffler on here the muffler is perfectly fine uh, uh, four strokes they run extremely clean out there so you don't have any kind of serious um, uh, carbon buildup on the actual muffler in there so uh, you should never see any kind of uh, you know severe carbon buildup on the exhaust side or the spark arrestor of the actual muffler assembly as well too so we'll go ahead and fire this thing up here for you guys and you can actually see it idling here and gunning up here as well too and this is this is how your machine should, uh, should start whenever you get a new carb a new spark plug change oil out about three times because we did have to change oil on this uh, machine probably about about four times originally because the guy apparently never changed the actual oil on it ever before and whenever he originally bought it at the pawn shop the oil was pretty pretty damn black and to say it nicely this is what the actual oil looks like right here it's uh 
pretty pretty bad and we also noticed he had a lot of glitter at well what, what, what i say glitter is it's like little shiny pieces of metallic objects in the actual oil right here as well too so we had to replace the oil by four times in here uh, we put 10w30 oil back in, in the actual engine even though you can use 10w you can basically use 30 weight 10w30 10w40 uh, something I, I prefer a multi-vis oil myself because uh, it flows easier when it's cold outside and you still retain the 30 weight oil specification as well too. So I use, use 10W30 in machines. It's only about 2 ounces of oil. So we'll go ahead and get this thing fired up here for you guys. Let me put my camera down here real quick and I'll get this thing fired up here for you. Okay. My hands cleaned off. There we go, fire the sucker up. Okay, we've got it fired up here for you guys. Let me get my camera focused here. There we go, it's idling. Idling good right now, no problems with it, with it whatsoever. I do have to be wary of that uh, anytime you have a four stroke engine, you have your little breather on the intake side right here as well too. This thing will have a lot of oil coming out of here if uh, you overfill the actual crank case. So you have a little small breather right here and if the crank case is severely overfilled, there'll be oil coming out of this portion right here. We'll go ahead and gun this thing up here a couple times where you see it gunning up. Get this thing out of the way here first. Okay, get the old oil out of the way. Gun this sucker up for you. So it appears to be running perfectly fine now. And it's ready to go back to the customer. All you gotta do is put the air box back together on here. I'll go ahead and shut the thing off. So uh, that's basically the review for what we did on the machine here today. This is the Sears Craftsman Weed Eater, or Weed Whacker, whatever you wanna call it here. This is the four stroke overhead valve engine on here. Let me flip it around here so you can see, get, get, get a better shot here for you guys. Okay, here we go. There, it should be better like that. There we go. Sears Craftsman, no mix of oil or gas, four stroke, four cycle engine, uh, 30 cc, as it says right here, with the uh, speed start technology on here as well too. And this is the newer generation of the machines out there as well too, because they have the they have the newer, I want to call it Sears Craftsman uh, logo right here as well too. So that's basically everything about the machine here. Give you a show of the actual boom here as well too. You have your uh, throttle down here. You have your bike handle right here. You have your on and off kill switch right here as well too. And you have your uh, multi combi connector right down here. Take this thing off and put a multiple attachments on here as well too. Plus you have your uh, weed head cut down here as well too. Your weed uh, string trimmer cutter head down here as well too. That's what it looks like. You have a nice uh, long straight shaft. You have a gear casing down here as well too. And this is what the string trimmer or the string looks like on the bottom as well too. So that's basically everything about this machine here. Anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot, just uh, feel free to uh, leave me a message here. And I'll try to get back as soon as possible with some kind of basic uh, help or troubleshooting if you have a machine similar to this. I'll see you guys. Have a nice day.